Hi, this is Dr. Pan, host of Tucson Math Doc channel on YouTube. Today we're talking about difference quotient. This is part three of three. And uh, we're going to be doing examples. As a matter of fact, I'll do three examples here. So first one, I'm going to do uh, 3x minus 2. Uh, here's f of x. And for this one, I want to evaluate it when x equal to 2. So basically, I'm looking for a slope. Let's look slope at x equal to 2. Okay, so this one actually have a numerical value. Example 2, I'll be doing uh, one that involves a pretty common one. Let's see, it's a f of x equal to radical of x. Okay, as you recognize this one um, from derivative, later on we'll see what we're going to end up with using difference quotient. And example 3, I'll do one that's a um, little more complicated that has a cube in it. Okay, x is 3 equal to x to the cube. All right, let's get started. Uh, let's take example 1 over here. f of x is equal to 1 over 3x minus 2 um, at x equal to 2. Now earlier, I cheated a little. I used my derivative to find the, the function first. So derivative of, let's put an x here, uh, 3x minus 2 to the minus 1, the whole thing take derivative. If you don't, yeah, if you haven't done a derivative, that's okay. It's it's not a big deal. All I'm trying to show is that I can calculate the answer much quicker if I know how to calculate derivative. So from here, it's a minus 3 over 16. And that gives us a reference point. Okay. So what we should find using the difference quotient or should it have exactly the same answer? Well, let's see if we can get there. So f of x at 2 plus delta x minus f of 2 divided by um, 2 plus delta x minus 2. Now remember, this is just a rise over run, basically. Okay. From part 1, we remember this is just really calculating a slope at x equal to 2. Okay. So going from there, let's evaluate it in there. I have uh, 1 over 3 of 2 plus delta x minus 2. So I did it. This is my function. Okay. Now remember my function says whatever you gave me, I'm going to multiply by 3, take 2 away from it, and take inverse. Okay, so f of this function, then it's become 2 plus delta of x. Okay. Minus of f2, which is 1 over 3 times 2, and minus 2. Okay, so when I give 2 over here, then I plug 2 in here. Okay. The whole thing is divided by delta x. Now, dividing by delta x is really tedious to write, so I'll just say 1 over delta x times this whole thing. What do I have here? So it's 1 over, this is 6 minus 2, so it's 4 plus delta x minus 1 over 4. Okay, we do have to find a common denominator here. Okay, so if it's not quite clear, you can always pause it and go work it out on your own and see if you get the same thing. So here I have 4 minus 4 minus delta x. Okay, so far so good. Um, one, oh, I have a 3 here, actually, okay, times 3. So uh, I have a 4 uh, minus, minus this one times 3, okay. So 4 and 4 cancels, okay, so I have 1 over delta x, and then times minus 3 delta x over 16 plus delta x times 4. Okay, delta x cancels, I have, so all I did it as I clean it up, 4 and 4 cancels, minus 3 delta x is over here, and delta x cancels here, so I have a minus 3, 16 plus 4 times delta x. Now, as limit of delta x goes to 0, obviously we have minus 3 over 16, just like the previous, if we did the shortcut of f of 2 is equal to minus 316. Okay, so indeed it does work. Let's go on to the second problem. Okay, second one is a little more um, 
involved either. The function is a little messier, but nothing we can't handle. Okay, so function alpha of x is equal to radical of x. Once again, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Since I know I have a prime, once again, if you don't know the, how to find a first derivative, it's no big deal. Okay, so I'm just going to show this is equal to half of x to the minus half. So I know what the answer is actually going to be. Okay, now for this one, I'm not going to evaluate at a certain point. I'm actually going to figure out what the general form is. So let's get started. x plus delta x minus of x, x divided by delta x. This one is going to be x plus delta x minus x. Once again, a function form is copied exactly because function of x says give me whatever okay I'm gonna plug it in and take a radical root so if you give me an, an heart I'll say it's radical of heart if you give me an apple I'll say it's radical of apple okay so you give me a radical of x plus delta x and then it's radical of x plus delta x now from here it looks pretty puzzling how on earth are we gonna simplify this there's a trade in this uh, secret. This is what you do. Whenever you see a, uh, looks like a difference of square almost, you go there and you make it a different square. And this is how we're going to make it. Okay, this is what I have. I'm going to multiply almost its conjugate in that x plus delta x. I'm going to add delta x. Since I multiplied something on top, I better do exactly the same on the bottom. So I don't change what I started with. Okay. The reason I want to do that is this one times this fits nicely in that a minus b times a plus b is equal to a square minus b square. That's a very elegant, tricky way solution. Okay, so let's go back there. We have one over delta x. On top I have x plus delta x. Okay, I conveniently removed the radical using this square formula here, minus x. Okay, x and x cancels very conveniently. And the bottom way I have x plus delta x plus delta uh, plus x. Okay, this delta x cancels this one. So all I have left is 1 over x plus delta x plus radical x. Okay. Now, as limit of delta x goes to zero, you can see it becomes radical x plus radical x, which is equal to 1 over 2 radical x, or as we predicted earlier, equal to 1 half uh, x to the minus half. Okay. Just like the f prime of x. Okay. So everything works out. Uh, works out really beautifully. Now this is a trade a secret here. Whenever you have a square looking square difference of square looking like terms, you make it a square of difference. All right. Let's keep on going to the cube one, and then I would hope that you have a pretty good idea how to uh, handle difference equation. Now, okay. Let's see. F of uh, three. Let's see where is it. F of three. We're gonna have this one equal to x to the cube. Now this one, as you know, if you know derivative, it's a really simple one. It's equal to 3x squared. And let's see if we can use different quotient and prove that it's the case. Because I have x, x plus delta x minus f of x okay, all over delta x. Okay. Let's plug it in there. Once again, function of x says Whatever you give me, I'm going to cube it. If you give me x, I'll put an x. If you give me f of, um, let's see, uh, cube, okay, then I'm going to cube this thing cubed. Okay. If you give me f of a star, then I will star cubed. Okay. So all f is saying I'm setting up the form. So over here, then I would have x plus delta x cube minus x to the cube, okay, over delta x. Okay. I don't know about you, but 
expanding this cube is going to give me a headache. However, there's a very easy formula that comes very handy. It says, if you have a cube difference, then the first one you follow, okay, times square plus AB plus B squared. Okay. Now, whether you memorize this or not, it's up to you. But the more formulas you do have ye at your disposal, the easier this one comes. If you don't remember this, it's no big deal. You just have to multiply them out. Okay, let's assume you do know this one. So I'm going to go there and call this one A, call this one B. First term is A minus B. So I have this minus B. Okay, second term is a little more tedious, but nothing we can't handle. X plus delta X squared plus X times X plus delta X I'm running out of room here a little bit, but I will expand it later on x squared. Okay, everything is over delta x. Okay, let's give us some breathing room here. X and x cancel, delta x cancels. So what do I have left here? I have x plus delta x whole thing squared plus x times x plus delta x plus x squared. Ah, much more space. So basically, it's just this term, okay, where my a is equal to x plus delta x, and b is equal to uh, x here. So this one, it's pretty easy. Let's expand it. x squared plus 2x times delta x plus delta x squared. Okay, that's the first term. Plus x squared. Now watch how I'm going to line them up, because I know after I combine or expand them out, I do have to combine them again. Okay, so I'm just lining up, so make it easier for myself to combine it. Okay, so I open it, everything up here. I open the square term, which is x squared plus cross term plus squared. And then I open this one, which is x squared plus x delta x, and this x squared. So here I have 3x squared plus... 3x times delta x. Now, as you know, if delta x approaches 0, I have my pretty elegant first derivative of function recovered very nicely. All right? This concludes the three-part series of difference quotient, and I hope it helps you. Have a confident day.